This video is intended for students who have difficulties understanding the concept of systematics and cladistics. It is not an overview, but rather an alternative explanation. Imagine you are the new king or queen of a small kingdom and your job is to keep everybody happy. It's your first time ruling a kingdom and you are a little bit overwhelmed by your new job. To make things worse, you were transferred from another kingdom and you don't know anybody of your people yet. You want to get an overview as quickly as possible, so you start putting the people into groups. But after looking at their pictures for a while, you realize that there are many ways how you could do that. For example, you could make groups based on hair color. That would be easy, just add people with black hair in one group and people with red hair in another group, and so on and so forth. However, this approach is not very useful because it doesn't help you understand the structure of your kingdom. The answer pretty much depends on what you want to find out. If you want to find out a lot of information at once, then sorting by family is a good idea, because you can make assumptions about the whole family by finding out information from just one family member. For example, if you know the socioeconomic status of one or two family members, you can make an educated guess about the wealth of the rest of the family. Also, certain diseases are passed on from one generation to another, and this can give you an idea about the overall health of a family. Maybe a king would not be interested in this information at all, but I hope you can see that sorting by families allows you to make a lot of assumptions. Unfortunately, you don't know anybody in your kingdom yet, and the only information you have is their names and a picture. You don't want to wait until your administration collects all additional data for you, so you start to sort them by their last names and how they look like. Here's an example of the Miller family tree you just reconstructed. It contains three generations of people which have Miller as their last name and from whom you think they could be related based on their looks. Obviously, that is just a starting point and you have to keep working on that family tree. You know that your first tree will very likely have errors because not everybody with the same last name is related to each other, especially with such a common last name like Miller. Also, looks is not always the best indicator of natural relationships because children can look very different from their parents and unrelated people can look alike. After gathering more data, you found out that Bertha Miller is actually not John Miller's wife, but belongs to another Miller family. Another problem with the family tree is that people can change their family names. This is true for Susan Gonzalez, who is married to Enzo Gonzalez. It turns out that she is William Miller's sister and she and Enzo have three children together. Even more information revealed that William and Susan have a brother called James, James Black, who is married to Hilda Black, and they have a daughter called Sarah. You have been doing the same approach for all other families and you now have a good overview of your kingdom. Hopefully, it will serve you well in your decision-making process as a king or queen. But how does that help you as a student to understand the concept of systematics and cladistics? Systematics is the science of sorting, naming, and organizing all species on this planet to make it easier to understand their biology, their history, and evolution. If the sorting and organizing is based on the principle of natural relationships, then systematists are using cladistics as their approach. Just as you as a king or queen have chosen to sort all people based on family relationships rather than their hair color, there is one big difference in our example to what systematists do and it is important that you understand the difference. Systematists are not looking for relationships of different individuals of a certain species, but they look at how all species are related. For example, they are not interested in who your great-great-grandmother was,
but whether the human species is closer related to birds than spiders. Systematists are facing similar problems as you did earlier. For example, looks can be deceiving and are often not a good indicator of who is more closely related to whom. For the tree of all living organisms, systematists use different sources of information, such as DNA similarity, morphology, structure, chemistry, and physiological characters. New information is revealed constantly and the tree changes accordingly. Another difference between systematics and our kingdom example is that scientists can't use the name of organisms to reveal their relationships. It is rather the other way around. First, systematists reconstruct the tree and then they name the groups. Because of the fact that the tree is in flux all the time, names of organisms are constantly changing as well.